All right, hello, good morning. Uh, welcome to Adventures in Ideas, where I talk informally about ideas that I happen to be interested in at the uh, at the time. So today I'm talking. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Thomas Zaza's ideas about uh, ideas about mind, his theory of mind. Um, he's uh, Zaz. Thomas Zaz is uh, was a psychiatrist, most famous probably for his book in the early '60s about the myth of mental illness. I'm uh, talking today more about some of his later work, which ad tries to address what is mind. He wrote a book in the 1990s called uh, The Meaning of Mind, I believe, and he gave a talk around that time on the same topic, which I'm kind of basing my uh, ramblings today on. This uh, th uh, talk was called Mind, Brain, and the Problem of Responsibility. Responsibility is a really important concept in Zaz's work, maybe the most important concept. So I'm going to try to uh, explain how he ties those together, although I'm not quite sure I fully understand his, um, his idea of responsibility, what exactly he means by responsibility. So uh, I want to talk about what he says about mind, which is interesting. I think not fully what a philosopher would want to understand when we talk about mind. I think it's there's other aspects that uh, people would want to take up if they are taking up the idea of mind, the concept of mind. And Zaz addresses one part of that, a very important part, maybe for humans the most important part, but there are other things that I think he doesn't address, and that's fine. So I think he's maybe uh, I basically agree with will agree with Zaz as far as he as far as he goes with the concept of mind, but I think there's other things that could be said about the topic. So Zaz, in his at least in his address his short paper that uh, kind of summarized his view of mind. Uh, in that short paper, he begins by pointing out that some philosophers and some important philosophers uh, think that the mind and the brain are basically the same thing. So the mind and the brain are uh, basically the same thing. This is called the um, mind-brain identity theory in philosophy. And he gives some statements from people like Daniel Dennett and uh, John Searle asserting that mind and brain are one, are the same thing. And he thinks this is quite a peculiar way to talk, well, to put it maybe politely. I mean, he's polite in his paper, but uh, to put it diplomatically. Um, and he points out that the brain has a very clear meaning for us, like a well-understood meaning. Yeah, there may be some issues, um, you know, uh, demarcating where exactly it ends or begins. But we have the basic idea of where the brain is. You know, we see when we see a brain, we know what it is. It's the thing inside your skull, basically, the tissue inside your skull, and we have a a kind of a good idea about what it does and what it is. The mind, however, is not the same in that way. We don't have really an agreement about what mind is, where it is, what it's for, uh, where it comes from, and all these things. So brain is a very concrete term. Mind is not, at least in many domains of conversation and in many domains of uh, intellectual work like philosophy. So uh, he points out that a surgeon never calls a brain a mind. So philosophers call minds brains, some philosophers anyway. Um, but a surgeon or someone who deals with the body is never going to mistake a brain for a mind. They're, we're very clear about what a brain is. A surgeon is very clear about what it is he's dealing or she is dealing with when he or she is operating, for example, on a brain, on the uh, skull. 
So Zaz argues that rather than looking to the brain, or he suggests, he's going to suggest that rather than looking to the brain to understand the mind, we need to look at the self and at society, at the person level and at the social level. And he mentions here George Herbert Mead, who I've talked about before and um, who's an important figure in pragmatism. So this is another place where, or one of the places where Zaz shows his links with American pragmatism, which is kind of interesting. Um, Zaz, if you know, was a Hungarian immigrant. He came to uh, the, the United States when he was fairly old, I think, basically an adult. But his work shows a lot of uh, linkages with um, American philosophy, which is kind of interesting. Um, so he draws this link with uh, people like George Herbert Mead. Mead had a fa uh, his most famous book is called Mind Self Society. So he puts those three terms together, or at least um, the editor of the book did. Um, but he does link in his writings those uh, ideas of mind, self, and society. So anyways, we're not looking at the brain. We're not really looking at biology. We're looking at what the person does as a social creature. And Zaz is also going to suggest, and this is an interesting suggestion, that the organ of the brain is not the, sorry, the organ of the mind is not the brain, but uh, language. So he's going to suggest that we look to something like language and language behavior if we want to understand the mind, not at the brain per se. And I don't know if this analogy is quite, um, you know, it might be a little bit misleading. He talks about the, uh, for example, that the lung is the organ of respiration, language is the organ of mind. And I'm not sure that analogy, you know, it's a little bit confusing to me. So I'm not going <laughs> to dwell on that, and maybe we shouldn't. But it's an interesting suggestion that, the, that language is the organ of the mind. So maybe it's not the best analogy, but it gets us in kind of started on uh, Zaz's theory here. And his basic, so for Zaz, the basic mental activity is talking to yourself. This is, I think, what he uh, believes is the fundamental mental activity. And this is where he might differ with um, some philosophers and psycho other psychologists. But... We're gonna, I'm going to try to follow this idea for a little bit at least, because I think it is an important idea. So the fundamental activity is talking to yourself for what he calls self -conver also calls self-conversation. And I should say this also goes back uh, into pragmatism and early behaviorism. So Grace de Laguna had a similar idea. Um, she wasn't quite, uh, didn't have quite as uh, narrow a view of mind as Zaz, but she understood that um, thinking is a kind of conversation, and it comes from our having learned to converse with other people. So first we learn to converse with other people, then we learn to converse with ourselves. And conversation is, well, I won't get into uh, De Laguna's theory of um, mind right now, but it's an interesting kind of link. And uh, Watson, John Watson, sometimes considered the founder of behaviorism, had a similar idea as well, that mind is basically talking to yourself. And Skinner talks about mind in a similar way. He has maybe a broader conception of mind, but um, still the idea of talking to yourself of language as a fundamental aspect of what we talk about when we're talking about mind is something that's found in a lot of uh, pragmatists and behaviorists. Um, so, yeah, Zaz was a psychiatrist, often concerned with the idea of mental illness. So he talks about hallucination, for example. Hallucination is a kind of self-conversation, uh, according to Zaz. It's a kind of talking to yourself. But it's a conversation in which the person who's doing it rejects responsibility for their thoughts, for their conversation, or for at least one side of the conversation or some parts of the conversation. So they might take responsibility for some part um, of the conversation that they consider to be their self, their true identity, but they may reject other parts of the conversation. They may be, uh, believe or state or argue or assert that it's vo uh, voices coming from outside, that it's some other agency putting words into their mind so they're 
the key thing about hallucination, at least hallucination, in, uh, verbal hallucinations, is that the subject, the person having the halluc hallucination, rejects responsibility for these thoughts. And this is where the idea, one place where the idea of responsibility comes in to Zaz's theory of the mind. But, so he goes on to say, consider someone like an artist or a scientist or an, or an inventor. These are also places where um, ideas seem to come to us or to people um, kind of unwilled or un, you know, in a non-conscious way. So artists talk about inspiration, scientists talk in a similar way too. Ideas sometimes, you know, sometimes the great ideas just kind of come. They kind of come from, no, come out of nowhere, um, as we say. And this is a very similar phenomenon, but in the one case, uh, it's basically, he says it's basically the same except for the value that we put on it. So it's the same thing except for there's a different kind of value. So in a hallucination, um, at least in our society, and different societies, of course, have had different, very different views about hallucinations and whether they're, you know, come from, whether they're divine or whether they're illnesses. Um, so we, in our modern society, we tend to think hallucinations are kind of sim uh, some symptom of a mental disease or something like that. Um, so we put this negative value on the hallucination and the person themselves might put a negative value on their hallucination if it's something that makes them uncomfortable. They want to say, this is not really me uh, saying this. This is coming from somewhere else because I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. Um, whereas in the case of an artist, for example, we put a positive value on that where they get some inspiration uh, to do something. They don't know where it came from. They didn't specifically think it themselves. It just kind of appeared to them and they follow that out in their work and we give them maybe awards or money or things like that if we like it at least, um, you know, if it's good enough. But we don't put a negative value on the kind of un, uh, unconscious thoughts that come to other people if they're productive. And um, yeah, so maybe that's all I wanted to say about that. Thought I had another point, but I think I forgot it for, at the, for, uh, for the moment. So uh, Saz goes on to suggest, and this is something that I don't quite understand, um, well, I'll say, and then maybe I'll have something to add to it. So Zaz suggests that treating behavioral problems like hallucinations, for example, or, or other kinds of things that we categorize as symptoms of mental illness. So treating behavioral problems of, as properties of the brain gives us a reason for controlling others. So rather than looking to, for example, the individual's relationship to society, I would say, again, going back to this idea of Mead, where you're looking at the kind of person-society relationship and how mind comes out of that, uh, treating it just as a, a brain problem gives us a certain reason to control others. Um, so we take away their responsibility. We say there's some problem with the brain. They used to say, and maybe they still say, there's some chemical imbalance in the brain and then we kind of the state or the psychiatric uh, psychiatrist um, becomes the um, becomes the person responsible for the person with the behavioral problems he calls this coercive paternalism so we kind of take over responsibility for this person we um, put them in a particular kind of institution um, we give them medications to kind of alter their behaviors, but we're taking responsibility for them. We're saying you don't have the responsibility for your own behavior. And this is a, um, a big issue for Zaz. I'm not sure I quite follow him here, but Zaz, I should say, was a libertarian, a pretty uh, kind of strong libertarian, which I don't think I would describe myself as a libertarian, really. Um, so that will maybe explain some of where Zaz is coming from. 
Uh, so let's see. Yeah, as I said, Zaz doesn't capture everything, I think, that we would normally categorize under the term mind. So I think language, uh, we, we sometimes call this inner speech. Inner speech is really a fundamental part of what we talk about when we talk about mind. But there's also things like uh, feelings and perception. I don't know if Zaz would consider perception as part of mind. Um, so there's things like feelings and perceptions, uh, desires, and definitely these things come into inner speech. A lot of our inner speech is about how we're, how we're feeling, what we're planning to do, what we want, and things like that. Um, but he doesn't capture what some philosophers would call uh, phenomenal consciousness, sort of, sort of our pre- uh, linguistic uh, experience of the world, kind of the subjective experience we have of the world, um, or what uh, kind of phenomenologists would call pre-reflective self-consciousness, uh, kind of the pre, again, pre-linguistic, um, pre-reflective experience of ourselves. So we have these kind of pre, pre-linguistic, pre-reflective experiences of ourselves and of the world which some uh, philosophers and psychologists would want to put into the category of mind. And uh, that's not a huge issue for me. I mean, people focus on what they think is important, what they want to focus on. And I think what Zaz points out here is uh, important. I would agree with him as far as he goes, at least about that mind, at least an important part of mind is self-conversation, a conversation with yourself. I think that's uh, right, basically. And again, that links up with other ideas from behaviorism and pragmatism, so I don't see a big um, problem with that view. I do think there is more that we can say, though. So I think, um, I guess my criticism is not that Za is wrong, but that he doesn't, uh, is maybe incomplete as far as he talks about mind. But he's written quite a lot. I may be missing something, but at least from the parts of his book, The Meaning of Mind, that I've read, and his um, short paper about mind, brain, and the problem of responsibility, I would say there's something incomplete there. But it is very, a uh, very interesting perspective to think about. So that's all I want to mention for today. Thanks for watching and listening, and see you next time.